I used to work on equipment for Volunteer Express down there in Martin, Tennessee. That's where he's from, down through there in that area. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. He was in the trucking business. Yes, sir. And the beer business. Did you know he's in Yeah, the he was a, a distributor for Budweiser, I believe it was. Yes, sir. All right, we're going to go ahead and call. And uh, may our former governor rest in peace. That's right. He was, he was a good, good man. man. Yeah. yeah. I knew him real well. Kind of made me, y'all made me smile. He, what he would tell me was, you give me a cup of coffee and four vanilla wafers, I'm ready to go to work. Yep. That's what he would say. So he was a good guy. His son, Mike's a good guy, too. I, I hadn't seen him since he ran. He was a well, good know, that's, guy. That's how they interconnected all the counties. He wanted to make sure that every county was connected to the interstate system by a four-lane highway. So that was his push back when he was governor, and he did it. Yeah, he, he I'll tell you one thing about that guy, and then we're <coughs> going to, we'll go ahead and move on. But he knew how to build a highway. You know, I mean, he was smart about that stuff. He really was one of the originators of the at the <coughs> night time, how they work at night sometimes. Um, it might have cost the city, the city, the state a little more money, but it was worth it because they got finished a lot quicker than they did. He was the one that started all that um, in Tennessee. I could tell you a story about my mom and him, but I'm not going to. She's not She's not here to defend herself. <laughs> all right. <laughs> it was pretty funny, really. it's, it, but... We were close to them. All right, we're going to go ahead and call the meeting to order. Um, let him. Okay, good. We're we're rolling, so uh, I don't know if they. How you doing? Good. All right. I don't know if anybody has anything here. We've got a couple of things on the agenda, but we've only got about eight items, and then I have a, a couple interesting ones for all of us that. Um, It'll be good little party tricks or party questions or comments to say <laughs> if you're at a party about uh, public works that uh, that hit us and we need to ask about, but one especially. Um, we'll go ahead and let's move on with the uh, ev everyone is here. So uh, I guess we need to do a roll call. Do we need to do a roll call? I think if, I, if there's no objection, I'll just say everyone is present. That probably will make it better. better. Um, the 2021 um, access grant, uh, the invitation to apply, what is that about that? Yeah, yes, and what you had before you, I, it, was, it was in the packet um, when we met last month, and I, I failed to give you another copy of that, but what that is, it's a multimodal access grant that we've been invited to apply for uh, through TDOT. And the the route, um, of course, multimodal is, you know, you know like a sidewalk, uh, that type of um, facility, but the project route is along um, Main Street uh, from Sanders Ferry Road to Executive Park Drive and includes construction of new multimodal facilities as well as reconstructing and rehabilitating existing multimodal facilities. And so it's, it's a 95-5 split, uh, meaning that, you know, for example, for, you know, for every $95, you know, we contribute $5. So it's a, it's a fairly substantial uh, contribution from the state that we would be getting. Uh, we're in the process of, of applying for that now. And uh, hope to uh, hope to hear good news uh, in, in the near future. But th that will help us uh, not only provide obviously access through sidewalks, but it, it'll help us meet our uh, ADA um, our ADA requirements oh, set good. forth in our transition plan. That's what I was going to um, ask. It'd uh, be part of our ADA <coughs> compliance. Yes, and so it's you know we'll be able to you know make our dollars go a lot farther uh, you mm -hmm. know with with that grant. So. I just wanted to. Yeah, yeah, there's no you know, obviously no vote needed for that. But just wanted to make you make you aware. They wouldn't give us thirty million dollars, would they? I mean, <laughs> no, ninety-five we're, five split. That'd be great. Well, we're, we're asking <laughs> we're asking for a million. We're asking for a million dollars. Ask hopefully. for more. Yeah, Come on. Yeah. And uh, again, that is on Main Street along. Correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, from, from Sanders Ferry to Executive Park Drive. And okay. It's for yeah. sidewalks. Mm -hmm. For sidewalks. Well, the sidewalks and ramps essentially if there's any missing pieces we would build those pieces and what's there if it's not in compliance we would bring it into compliance okay. so, sure that's yeah. Yeah. So. that's why i said ask for 30 million dollars so a million dollars that's fifty thousand our part right that's correct okay. boy that's now that's a deal i know it is yeah. yes sir okay good job. okay great all right 
we'll keep um, keep us up to date on that, and we probably won't know what went till next year on that. With it being, we, we we should know if we're successful by by the end of <clears throat> by the end of this year. Okay. Um, Let me know. And then All right. Yeah. Any questions on that? That's a great. That's a great one. Um, hearing none, let's go on to the update of our wonderful traffic light synchronization. Yes, I give you a, a, a brief a brief history. Um, we had, working with TDOT, they, you know, they let us know uh, several months ago that we would have to, in some ways, go back to the drawing board and provide them with information. Oh, yeah, that's right. On uh, the, the equipment that we had that we wanted to improve, uh, they told us, well, it, it appears this is outside you know, outside state right away or, or city right away, and so. Um, you know, we went back and actually hired, um, you know, hired a civic or a consultant to go back and survey, you know, those areas and, and tell us, you know, where, you know, where is it located? Is it inside right away, outside right away? And so we went through several locations. I can't remember how many there were, but there were, uh, you know, maybe nine or ten locations throughout the city. They surveyed, and we you know, determined that there were, out of all those surveyed, there was only one that was outside right away. So in, in some ways, it was it was good it was good news. Uh, we, we were worried that there would be more than that right. outside right away. And so and and the and the, the catch to all this is we you know we obviously we can't use we we can't use federal funding unless it's inside right away. And so we have to um, either re remove that item out of the project or go through the process to to bring it in acquire the right away or easements to you know to make it make it work. And so. We got the survey done. Um, now we're working with our consultant to update the plans with that information, and then we will re resubmit those back to TDOT, you know, you know, for their review and approval, and then we will proceed. Uh, I th one thing that we're looking at now is for that one location that is outside the right of way. I, I believe that we're going to do that work ourselves, okay. and then just update the plans accordingly, you know, with that showing that we're doing it, and then that way it won't slow down. The, the rest of the project, um, but we're we're looking forward to to get the plans updated, get them back to TDOT, and then they will give us a, approval to to rebid uh, once they once they sign off on it. So, question. Uh, yeah. So, uh, TDOT found that there were some right of ways or some easements. I'm sorry, some facilities yeah. out of the right of way. That they need to be modified. The, the, the way the, the the way the plans were presented to TDOT, it, it, it visually it looked like there were th there were items outside the right of way. Okay. Now the it's it kind of into the weeds a little bit. It's kind of hard to explain, but the the way the ITS plans were created is that we simply used you know, GIS data to, to to show on the plans, and then we on top of that you know show the proposed work. Um, you know what had happened the, the you know, GIS data that we showed it's not it's, it's not entirely accurate as compared to a, a survey oh, okay and, and so uh, obviously we couldn't you know we didn't want to go to the expense of surveying the entire city we just we, you know, did what we thought was best and what is typical practice in those types of projects and and then TDOT saw that and of course they, they saw it five years ago and approved it but then more recently when we re submitted it for concurrence they they looked at it again and, and realized that we needed to, to to update the plans and and so we have, have since gone back and and the, the only way we knew how to do it was to actually survey those physical locations and and know where all the property lines were and and where the equipment was located and then we could you know accurately okay pr represent that information so i'm sorry <coughs> that's, i'm not trying to grill you about no, it no, if I, I, you, you, I just yeah. want to make sure that we're we're good this time yeah, yeah. so t dot found nine that were subject that that were questionable nine I, locations I, I, I don't know the exact number but there there was approximately 10 locations the throughout the plans that we had to go back and i, I can't remember i don't do you remember if it was nine or nine I don't or ten? Yeah, exactly. but it, it, let's, let's say ten. It was ten locations. Okay. They've, you know, they told us, hey, it looks like you know, and they and they they put it on us to go back and and but we had to verify essentially everything w was correct throughout the whole project, and 
what we did and there were a couple areas where we knew we needed to get survey information and so that's what we that's what we did to, to verify the location so have you communicated with TDOT I talked to TDOT a couple of days ago and got the information I needed because so I explained to TDOT that so we need to know you know what we need to do to submit back to you so we're not going back and forth so we I called TDOT and they, they gave me an explanation of what they needed and now we're going to go to our consultant and have them update the plans and resubmit and really so, updating is only on one location though correct one of the locations no, is out of the right of way well it, it'll be for all the locations uh, because we're, we're showing originally we showed you know the, the plans in such a way that it you know TDOT asked questions about it so we're going to go and make sure they're clear that all those areas we looked at that you know there's no you know there's no conflict you know, the equipment that we're proposing to work on is inside right away and that they can't question you know there, there there's no will be no question on TDOT's end okay uh, to approve it okay and now, so the one that's out yes. of right away yes how long will it take for that for the staff to get that one in the right away well th what I'm proposing we do is and I, this is something we got to we got to look at and evaluate but I'm initially thinking that we go ahead and whatever work is required at that one spot mm -hmm. we go ahead and do it we just do, do that do that small amount of work and then we can connect our work to the to the overall project when we update the plans so that so. work will have to be done before we resubmit to TDOT no it, it can be done it can be done at any point before we bid the project it, did it's, TDOT say that yes okay yes I, and that, that was one of their suggestions what you said you could do is that you can do the work with with city funds mm -hmm. And said so we just can't spend federal dollars on that on that work yeah. and, and so I, I feel like and, and and again we're still evaluating to be sure that's the best thing to do but initially we think that's the best idea is to do that instead of because the the, pro, the process for right away acquisition takes it takes time and so my, my thought was to to go in and, and build that one portion finish it and then we can you know go on you know you know we'll be able to go on with the rest of the project and then that contractor will just simply you know we'll have a note in the plans to say you know work to be done by others us and the project will connect to that to that work I guess I'm just so gun shy sure. on this project it's been you know they they keep finding they keep yeah, it's an eight year old project yeah they keep yeah. nitpicking us yeah. and you know everybody is is asking about that well it makes us look bad it does yes it does and 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 uh, the citizens are, are as you know they're they're disgusted with how right. long they don't really understand you Eight know years. it's the state yeah uh, so so and then we have to resubmit and then they have to approve and then we bid right so are we looking at another year Marshall realistically I certainly hope not another year I mean my my initial thought was six months um, to get it back maybe sooner but hopefully six months to get it back to the point we can rebid and advertise and get our bids back in for concurrence but it'll be ten and, but, and a half months it, yeah it's yeah. but, but, but it's, it's taking long you think this is it yes sir this is it yeah they're, they, they're not going to have any more October surprises <laughs> okay I tell you man this I'm with you it's uh, this is a, it we started before I became an alderman that's why I say it's eight years old because it was two years in the works already when I walked in the door I'm gun shy. and I'm like man I know I, that's why I've been mentioning that we need to bring some of our projects in-house if they're like one to two million dollars we just need to bite the bullet do it ourselves and move forward and yeah. take the eight years of compliance and let's get everything lined up to let's do that have it done in a year well mr. chairman I would like uh, I would like periodically updates in the committee, you know, yeah, uh, as I we think progress. We can provide, yeah, every I month we can provide updates. We've done, we, you've asked for that. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Several, several months ago, actually. Yes. So, yeah. um, yes, and I, he, I think what Alderman Roberson is saying, he's just emphasizing he would like some, just a reminder to the chair and as well as public works department that he wants to find he wants those updates sure and do you plan to give the full bone yes I, report? Uh, yeah I have, oh yes because I, I i will do that you know just for everybody because it's been on everybody's yes um, yes <laughs> thought yes. process let's just say 
and uh, so we will do that uh, Tuesday, I guess it is. So uh, I've written things that I do want to ask one thing, and I don't know whether you want to say or not, so I'm not trying to put you on the spot. But you said the one, where is the one located in Anderson? The uh, corner of Anderson and Indian Lake by, by Cheddar's. Huh. Yep. Wow. Okay. This is not the one we expected, but. Yeah, I didn't expect. That's yeah. why I'm saying wow, because I'm not yeah. expecting. Yeah, I wouldn't think that yeah. one would have been it either. Me either. Yeah. That's kind of shocking, but. Because yeah. that may be asked uh, Tuesday. Yeah. All right. Well, that's interesting. Okay. <laughs> Any discussion on the light synchronization program? That's, that's we all have the same wants. As yeah, that that one right there. Robinson pointed out. Yeah. yeah, no, that one right there is for sure. There's not going to be any discussion in terms of something that's against what what our thought process is on that. All mm -hmm. right, let's go on to our paving update list. You, um, you, the, the what do you want? You want to do the street lights for street hidden lights point? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Are the, I think. <laughs> Mr. McPherson. Yeah, yeah, come on up. Can, unless you're, if you're worried about coronavirus, we can talk well, a little louder. Or, or I, I, I think I've got it. I think I've got it worked out. But he's, okay. he's more than welcome to. Yeah, yeah come I, up and, I just want to make sure he. <coughs> yeah, and I apologize if I would have. I need to wear these all the time now. So I've got to get, I've got to get new glasses. And I apologize for letting you wait. We would have moved that up because I know. No problem. No. But uh, it's good to see you. Thank you. And um, go ahead and, and let's do that. Um, yeah, so we'll try to summarize. We we have a situation where the Hidden Point has had streetlights in their subdivisions for several years. Uh, they have underground power. Obviously, they have decorative streetlights. Uh, I think it has come to their attention recently that NES, they were never being billed, I think, for their streetlights is what they realized. And so, some of them. Some of them. And so um, in, in taking this situation and trying to compare it to other situations uh, around town where we have uh, a agreements w with neighborhoods right. to reimburse street lights, um, the, the power, the, the money that they pay for power for the street lights. Right. It's like in Winston Hills, Walton Trace, there's there's four or five uh, around town that we've had agreements with for, for several years um, you know, you know, that have, have been in place and seem to be working okay. They every you know every quarter they come in, bring us the bill, and we simply you know, reimburse them that sure. money. Um, I think that's a, an administrative function Dave can I think can handle um, because of the, the the cost is, is is so low. But I, I just wanted to I, I guess kind of present that you know to to the committee and um I've, I mentioned to Mr. McPherson and um and just, and I, again I don't think is it needs, that okay? need, needs a I mean, to but. Yeah, I was going to say after you start talking mm -hmm. like that, um, <clears throat> just between you and me, mm -hmm. when we were talking about it, I think I have two subdivisions in my in my district that do the same thing. Y yes, yeah. and I remember um, God, another one rest his soul, it's making me feel old. But Jack Long then worked out the home, the homeowners down there and. Uh, yeah. I, I think it might have been Walton Trace it, or something. It might have been Walton. I, Trace. I, I think for the, what I've realized, like, is for the older neighborhoods, I think that's kind of kind of typical. Yeah. For the newer neighborhoods, we you know we just simply add those lights to our account. Right. But then yes, yeah. it's not a. It's a. Okay. It's a more. So formality. is there any action that we need to, to make no, it, as a as a? As it, a of course, certainly Mr. McPherson is welcome to, to speak, but that okay. was I just wanted to you know, present that and make okay. sure everyone was okay with it, and I'll work it out with Dave. Yeah. Too. Are you guys everybody? Yeah. yeah we we do have a policy on that, so so this action is consistent. Yes. With the street yeah, light yeah, policy. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So because it, I think the policy I read it, it's limited to just a certain number of street lights. Yes. They can't put them on every house or right, it's right. only at the corners right. and dead ends. So that's what's being applied that's, here. That, 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 that's, that's correct. Okay. Yep. Right. Very good. Yes, sir. Is yep. there anything that you'd like to? N nothing. That would, are we also talking about maintenance or just the, the power? I, I believe it would just be the power. The, I have to look at those other agreements, but I believe they just get reimbursed for the power and the maintenance. Is separate, but I'll 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 look at that to be sure we're consistent. We have 35 yeah. lights, mm -hmm. counting both sides of the. So, yeah. are we talking about covering all 35 or just a? I believe that's the case. I'll what I'll do is I'll make sure that I'll go out and evaluate the lights to make sure it's consistent with the policy we have, and 
um, it, assuming it is, it, it'd be the, the power for all those lights. It usually would come up and you know, provide the bills, and then we would you know, you know, reimburse you for that, you know, for that. Now the maintenance money. NES takes care of, right? But, the, but but there's a maintenance there's a maintenance no, charge on the. No, we do. The okay, all right. We're spending about two hundred dollars for power and two hundred dollars for maintenance, maintenance okay. each month. Okay. Are they the decorative lights? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, that's okay. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Because yeah. uh, I was getting ready to ask them. What, well, wait a minute. We need to hold on a minute. But with the decorative lights, I understand what's going on there. All right. Well, um, now. So everybody's in agreement. So we're in good shape there. Yeah. That's even better. I don't. Um, um, have you notified uh, Hidden Point? That's um, Ward Four, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. So yes. you have you talked to um, Andy no, Bold? No, and, not yet. Not yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. No. All right. Well, we'll get in touch with him and let him know. Um, Andy no, I'll, I'll, and I'll give um, this, okay. Steve. This weekend. Do I need to be here for anything? We're through. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, we are. Yeah. Unless you ever have any problem, come on back and see us. We'd love to see you. So. As, as much as I enjoy it, I <laughs> We understand. Right. Thank you, gentlemen. You're very welcome. You take care. Here, tell everybody we said hello. All right. Yes, sir. All right. The only reason we're here for the big bucks, right? That's right. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. That was good. He's a good fella. I like him. I've known him for a while. Um, okay. So now we're on to the paving update. And that was mentioned a lot this morning, by the way. So that's, that oh, was good, okay. wasn't it? Wasn't it the okay. paving? Man, hey, everybody, everybody did. Everybody's running, wants to put more money in paving. I was, running, we'll down, I was running up down the interstate. <laughs> we'll so uh, speaking of paving, we'll though, uh, the no, state no. could have done a little bit better job on West Main Street on some of them seams they got down through there. I'm looking yeah, at that I brand new that. paving yeah. job. I thought, now they're going to come back and. Well, some, I don't know. There's some zigging and zagging yeah. there that they really could have. I'm like, hmm. That's true. Somebody was in a hurry. It's just my personal opinion of driving. No, you're right. To Nashville every day. It was two in the morning, Pat. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. Okay. Crank up the lights a little brighter. So <laughs> That's what they need. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead with the, the situation. It, it, this is I, give you an update yeah, on kind yeah, of where we are with our paving. Uh, obviously, I sent out a list previously that outlined uh, a number of streets uh, in, in order. Uh, of how they would be paved and in the talk on the Rogers group uh, we anticipate the uh, Rogers and public war staff to go out and look at the streets early next week uh, with obviously with trace and, and our inspection staff to to mark items of repair um, you know, the, the limits of the, the, of the paving and then um, work will soon begin thereafter okay. now uh, when I say soon, it could, I mean, work theoretically could start as soon as next week or the week after as far as paving. It, it depends on the, the repairs and kind of what's needed for the prep work. But uh, we, in talking to Rogers Group, they're, they're, they're looking, they, they have, have finished their work with TDOT, finished their work with Metro Nashville, and now they're moving to Hendersonville uh, to finish up what we need uh, before the end of the year. And so we are looking to have all, all this done by, you know, by December. And there's about twelve, uh, about twelve different roads on this on this list. Okay. It's going to go from uh, Luna yeah. Lane all the way down to Saunders Ferry Park on yeah. Saunders Ferry, right? I believe I can't remember the limits off the top of my head, but it's I mean it's it's, it's, it's almost a, it's a mile. Yeah, I know it's but, from yeah. it's from Luna Lane to yeah. Gates, I believe. But I'd really yeah. like to just just go on over the hill and connect it to where the boat dock stopped right there, Drake's Creek. Before you get to the, Don't we, 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 we will a nice we, long stretch of asphalt. We, we, we will carefully evaluate. I really would appreciate you doing. <laughs> Help me check that one, brother. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> like Ned McWhorter. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was like, Ned. That's what I said. I appreciate uh, the reevaluation yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's, I'll bring that's some funny. Uh, vanilla wafers too. Right there now. you <laughs> go. Well, that's good news. Yeah. Um, we'll uh, y'all just keep working as, as best and as quickly yeah. as you can. While yeah. we've got the great weather, I know it's supposed to rain this weekend, but I think you know, I think the forecast really is fair. We're supposed to have fairly good weather till the till you know around December, the end of December, first right. of, of January. So that's even better, really. Right. If that well, would happen. Have some questions. Go ahead. Uh, so, how much money do we have in the budget for paving? Oh, how much money do we have in the budget for paving this fiscal well, year? Need one, to push the button. Need to push it. Turn it red. Push it right there. You go. There you go. You're good. Unless you don't want to be heard. 
That's right, right. <laughs> that's, that's how it works. Well, silence is going. Well, yeah, that's sometimes the best answer. <laughs> the, 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 one point one point eight million in, in the budget for paving. That's combined uh, with supplemental paving, which where we have a million. Yes. And we have state street aid, and out of all of now we 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 pay several things with state street aid, but out of the entire pot of state street aid, we have about eight hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Towards paving. Okay. So you can obviously combine the two is one one point eight. But I don't understand. I've heard, I've heard in some of the forum debates or forums that we that we've budgeted 2.8 million for for paving, and that kind of struck me as I didn't know where they came up with that number. So the I, I, number I think it is over a million from the year before. 1.8 1.8 million. I think in last year's in in, in last fiscal year's budget, I had yeah. I had two million. Yes. And the eight hundred, and there obviously there was another eight hundred thousand in state street aid, but at, at the end of the, obviously as we approach the end of the year, we gave it, it up. We, we gave it up. Yes. And so it's gone. It's gone. Yeah. Now in this moving forward in this fiscal year, I'm ninety nine percent sure it, it's one, one million in supplemental paving. Yes. And eight hundred thousand in is. state street aid. It's one point. Yeah. Okay. When I the right. thing about it is, and I think yeah. what Eddie and is relating to like today we heard that you know and i'm just sitting there not saying thing. i think some people saw me going like no because i can't i would just look down i wouldn't say anything because it's none of my business right you know they said those folks say what they want to say yeah. and, and I, then, I, obviously if someone wants to I'm not gonna argue. if someone wants to amend the budget and, and appropriate more money for right. paving you're all for it i'll make the motion that's if we've got money <laughs> that's right that's the whole problem yeah. well yeah. i i hope you know, and I appreciate Eddie saying that. I hope the next, well, we just won't know. I shouldn't even just keep my mouth shut, but I'll just tell you how I feel about it. I think, I hope the next four years are for the infrastructure of the city of Andersonville. One, one thing I do want to point out is that this is not, that $1.8 million does not include any money right. from any development. It's that, yeah. That's completely general fund money that's and tax state, money. Street, state street aid money. Yes. Sure. Yeah. And, yes, I um, understand. But in speaking of right. developments, uh, if you're going to always shoot down yeah. developments and be anti-growth, then you're killing those dollars. Mm -hmm. So you've got, it's a balancing act here. We realize right. that most developments don't happen overnight. It takes them usually 5 to 10, 15 <laughs> years, some of them 20-plus years to develop. So, right. I mean, I talked to a lady today, and she said, I think she's out in Millstone. She said, "Boy, they just keep opening up another phase of my development out there." I said, "Yes, ma'am. You've got like 20. There's like 10 steps." And I said, "We're at number five. We got five more to go through." So, yeah. yes, I mean, now, I'm all for the money too, but we've got to get on the same page of right. how we're going to get there. Now, the 1.8 is not all for paving. Is that correct? That's that's correct. We've um, there's a portion that we try to set aside every year for for rehabilitation. Yes. And so, um, like when I say rehabilitation, that's that's pr preserving you know what we have, have paved in previous years to help it last you know last longer. So we we take uh, you know in, anywhere from you know, we try to go, have a goal of fifteen to twenty percent. So, uh, you know, two hundred fifty thousand, three hundred thousand dollars of of that will go towards uh, ceiling. Know, towards yes, the ceiling. You know, have we spent done. any of that money yet to do no. that? Well, Is that we don't, usually we don't, spring? It, Right, because if you remember, the, the, historically we have not been able to pave in this time of year. Mm -hmm. uh, only, only because we don't have enough money in, in our general fund to be able to, 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 be able to pave. Mm -hmm. And so Rogers Group has allowed us the, uh, the ability to, to, to pave um, what we want to pave and then make payments you know, through, the, through the fall and then finaling that payment out in the spring when we receive property tax. And so um, it's a it's a big benefit for us and and, and them. But um, but once we receive property tax dollars next year, you know, we'll have enough money to to do the rehabilitation. Yeah, we heard a report at I think at our last committee meeting by Sarah. Yes. That uh, there is a part of is it Hidden Point? Yes. Hidden, yes. That that it, we got to do something this year. Right. right. We're lake rolling. side of lake. Yeah, we're we're getting a price on that now. Um, okay. We don't know exact. We have a we estimate how much we think it'll be, but we we need a final price on that work, and then we'll have to use state street aid dollars um, to to pay for it because we we have state street aid dollars now, mm -hmm. but uh, some. But we just we'll, we'll have to find a way to pay for that well, this, we this year. We have that at our next public works yes. meeting next Tuesday. Yeah. And I'd like. I'd like a comparison analysis uh, of the
the rehabilitation versus putting the putting some paving down. Okay. Just to see the comparative cost, yeah. I'm yeah. sure that the that the rehabilitation is going to be cheaper, and we, and we are. But I always like to see apples and oranges. Yes, yeah. uh, sure. absolutely. The rehabilitation is only supposed to last, like I mean, when they seal the road, five, it give you five more years on the road surface. That's what it's designed to do. So basically, uh, as they say, seal that road. I had a person who thought when we sealed Indian Lake repaved it and they thought it was a horrible paving job I said no 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 that's simply right. a ceiling job there's a big difference in a paving job and a ceiling job so uh, okay. and it's designed to save about giving you about five years of additional life of the asphalt so yeah. that's a big thing too yeah a lot of folks don't understand that you know mm -mm. because you know that is it's subject to debate but you know I like it mm -hmm. I think it gives us a chance to kind of, you know, with taxes to come up, you know, what's right. going on. Yeah, it's, it's really the only way. But it's a gamble that, sometimes. Cause yeah. Marshall, I won't, there's a lot of intra-staff competition for dollars. Yes. And for one committee member that believes in paving, I want you to be the strongest advocate when those when all of those departments are saying, well, I need this, I need this, I want you to be yeah. a strong advocate for yeah. paving yeah. and fight hard for every dollar that you can. We, I know well, you are, but yeah, I, well, I have to say that. Right, absolutely. And I, and I, and I, I had, you know, I'd originally had proposed $2 million in the budget for paving this fiscal year, and we have a million. So this is obviously an internal process we go through to... Go ahead. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Be yeah. next when you get. Go ahead. Yeah. Anyways, I just want to point out uh, when we do storm water, the storm water paving. You know, sometimes we have to go out and pave a road to get the pitch Some, proper pitch yeah. and drainage off that road surface. So we need right. to also figure in those dollars that we're able to generate from a storm water utility for supplemental paving. That's additional funds right. going. Same exact issue. Yeah. So, yeah. as I know over there on, um, was it Iris? Well, we went in there and had to give a pitch to the road, yes. Yeah. dug yes, it up, yes. and resurface yeah. it, and because it was, the water was just pooling on the road. So that's a pretty pretty good segue into our next next topic. All right. There that's you go. Good job, Pat. Glad we segued into it for you. <laughs> All right. Well, we appreciate everything you can do for us, and just keep them keep them you know going on the paving list. We're doing real good there. Uh, so since we're doing that, let's go ahead with the stormwater update. Uh, yes, and I have, have Mr. Philip Nelson uh, with, with Civic Engineering to, to help with this. He, their company has provided a lot of, a lot of help and assistance with uh, our stormwater program. And I'm going to, uh, at this moment, turn it over to him. Okay. Let him go through a, a brief uh, presentation regarding our stormwater program and in projects. And, um, and could you li listen and we can ask, ask questions after Floor is yours, brother. All right, I appreciate you guys having me. Um, yeah, I'll just uh, just briefly. This is going to be kind of a, an update on where we've been, where we are right now, right. and then where we would like to go next. And we we really are at a point where um, we wanted to bring it before this body and and uh, get your feedback uh, on that and and go from there. So I'll just kind of go through the agenda. Um, I've got three items on it. Uh, the first is service requests. Um, that's that's the way we say uh, complaints. It's where people call in or email and they they uh, send in their service requests. Um, when this program started, uh, all, all these are coming in through just all kinds of different areas. Um, they were being tracked in spreadsheets um, and different spreadsheets from different personnel. Um, so w one of the first things when Marshall took over was he was just saying we can't track this 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 uh, program in spreadsheets. Um, you can't look at how these uh, service requests interrelate. You can't, it's just hard to understand it uh, that way. So one of the first things we did was develop a tracking and, and data management system. Um, I came and spoke with you all a, a little while back to kind of show you what that was gonna look like. Um, tonight we're gonna demo what that looks like. Um, then once, it's, it's good to manage your data and, and have that all in one place, but um, next we have to take that data and assess you know what's going on here uh, with these problems that are being um, sent in and how does it relate to other problems in the area and then how do we scope those um, so we'll talk about that and then um, I'll, like I said I'll demonstrate this stormwater work management system um, and then once once we go through all that and you kind of see how we're how we're um, 
evaluating all these, we'll move to, we'll have, you know, once you know um, what these service requests are and where they are and how they interrelate and what would make a project, well, then how do you prioritize it? So we have a, um, a way that we've uh, prioritized these that we want to show you how that's being done. And ultimately, we want to develop a multi-year prioritized project list that we think needs to be updated at least annually, but probably more often than that. Every time service requests come in, it's more information that we can then, you know, put, put back into the system and, and it can change priorities. So uh, we, we want to be transparent with how we're doing that. And, and, I, and I think that'll go a long way toward everyone. If you know what we're working on and, and what that looks like, just uh, kind of understanding where you, your problem is in, in the mix. And then uh, ultimately at the end, we want to talk about where we want to head next. Um, and, and we want to get your feedback on those. So I, I think this is hard to read from here. I'm just going to give you an overview. But I think it's important to start with the timeline. Like, how did we get to here? Uh, in October 2018, uh, we first started collecting, the city first started collecting um, st the stormwater fee and the property taxes. Um, at that time, uh, the previous staff, uh, kind of took the old spreadsheets and tried to put it in, in one spreadsheet and, and put together kind of a book of a capital improvement project list. But there wasn't great data in that information. Um, people were recording it, but because it wasn't really funded, there you know, wasn't really like a scope or how do we fix this. Um, so when, when Marshall took over in, in uh, around the, the May area, he, he asked for help just like I said, you know, we can't track this in spreadsheets. How do we manage this data? Um, and so he asked for, for that and for like a detailed scope of what we knew about that data and how that would be projects. And then also like, how can we prioritize this? So we kind of started in that time. And a month later was the major flash flooding of, there were two back to back major flash flooding events. Um, at the time, selfishly, we were like, man, this is horrible timing. Because um, we've got to get our, a handle around this, and, and we worked with Marshall and, and Dwayne and the staff to we were just drink from a fire hose at that point. There were, I think, there were 72 service requests uh, prior to that, and after those events, there were 232. So we we uh, just started uh, gathering that data. We met with a lot of property owners um, and and went out and collected this this data and put it in this tracking system and started assessing it. Um, in the meantime, while we're trying to get our head around that, um, Trace and staff already had previous uh, service requests that they were aware of, so they're still moving with the stormwater program and going addressing those, some of those that they know if they address, um, it, it kind of cherry-picked ones that if they fixed this, it didn't adversely affect downstream. So did a lot of maintenance and those type things in that time frame. Um, in about January of this year, we uh, had developed this ranked list of projects um, and we're ready really to, well, we started vetting it with the city and, and making sure we were all on the same page. And at that point, we were ready to come to you guys in the spring and then I, I had to put this on here, but COVID hit. And so that's why we're just now getting to, to meet with you guys. There was a lot of other things going on that this, um, this just got delayed somewhat. So we're here, we're ready to kind of walk you through this process. Um, what I'm going to show in the next slides are just kind of some screen captures from the tracking system, but just to walk you through kind of what we're doing, it'll be very surface, but then I'll, sh I'll demo the, the, uh, the work manager, stormwater work manager system for you, just kind of show you what it's doing and how it's helping the city now, and then we'll talk about next steps. Um, this is a screen capture from that, the, the green dots, you see a map of Hendersonville on the right, the green dots are open service requests. The red dots are ones that have been addressed and closed. We have a lot of open service requests. Um, and, well, and, and we do, and, and there's, you know, there's recent events that are being added to that. So um, what you're seeing here is um, the service request form. So uh, we enter, as people send these emails in, and they're coming in, some people send an email in, and, and the title is, I'm flooding, and then they tell you what the problem is, but they don't leave their address. or or you know they give their address and we don't so there's some research that has to go behind those um, and we'll talk about that in a minute too on how we want to address that um, but this is a really good one this is actually for uh, Cherokee Road uh, the folks out there sent a, a great email tons of pictures videos just really helpful information 
uh, which is why I'm using this one as, a, as an example. But um, this is just a listing of the pictures and videos, and they even sent a letter that we put in this system. So it's all in, in one place. Well documented. Well documented, and, and that helps. Uh, we take that documentation, and then we go and this is, I'm, I'm sorry that this is so far away, but we go and we do an assessment. Um, there's a lot of words right there. There's a lot going on at this location. Our inspector documented it very well. Um, but he, he documents it all in there, and then this is a list of pictures and things that he took. Uh, but ultimately, when we do this assessment, we can generate this report out of it. So it's, it's much more user-friendly for, uh, like, this, this body. If you say, well, I, I know my constituent uh, sent in a request for 219 Cherokee Road, which is where this is, can you tell me what that assessment was, and we can you know, give you this report if an assessment is deemed, you know, necessary. There, there are others where we get the requests and, and marshal staff can just go fix it. Uh, so not, not everyone goes to this uh, limit, but the more complicated ones definitely do. Um, so at, at this point, what I'm going to do, and hopefully this works well, I'm just going to go. So that, that's a represent, and I'd like a, a copy of your presentation. Absolutely. Hard copy. I can get so, you that. That indicates that that we haven't addressed the majority of the problems yet, correct? That's right. And I'm going to, as I get more into here, you're going to kind of see the, the amount that okay. there are a lot, of, a lot of issues that it's a prioritization method is very necessary for this because it's going to take a long time. And one issue reveals two other issues. It, it absolutely does. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and, and you've got to be very careful about treating a service request as a project because you can make things much worse for people downstream. That's right. Uh, the, the other thing that we've also realized is that not everybody sends in their complaints. Yes. Um, some folks, I believe, have been dealing with the issue so long that they think it's just something they're always going to deal with and they don't know to report it. Um, we're, we're at a point now where we need to learn that information. Sure. It's, it's helpful all the way through. But I'll just pull this system up. Um, this is kind of that area that you were looking at. We're just live now. Um, all the surface requests are listed over here, so you can, if you wanted to scroll and, and look for it, but I would suggest that's not the best way. Um, we can search. Well, I'm looking for my, so oh, here it is. Say, say where the highest concentration of complaints are. Yeah. South Burn. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's. Uh, Western area. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot, a lot in that area. There's just very concentrated areas where, where we're dealing with that. And um, is that the low? Is that one of the low points of the city, topographical? I, I wouldn't say that. There's there's uh, older parts of the city that have much hard, much worse problems. Um, almost where where some areas were were built in low areas. Um, yes. And, and then, you know, some things just kind of developed around it and over time has made, made things worse. Well, like over in Williamsburg subdivision, there's uh, crawdad holes that are probably a mile from the lake, but yet uh, the only reason why you have a crawdad hole is because the groundwater is right there at the surface of the, the top of the soil. But there's no creek around either. Oh, guys, I'm sorry. Let me, uh, got kicked out. I think we're having network issues. Remember that meeting where we came in and they had the green dots on the board and we had the pictures that people came in and yeah. handed us the photos and they started wanting to know when we could get to them like next week. I said, well, see all those dots? It's 150 people. <laughs> we can add yours to the list. Here we go. They didn't like that answer too much, but it was a truthful answer. So that's the similar uh, area before, but I'm gonna I'm gonna type in Cherokee just because it's kind of been the subject here, um, and we'll look at uh, let's see 219, which is the area I was looking at before. But this is um, so <clears throat> it'll zoom you to the map here. You can either use the map or this side, but this is the service request that was sent in. This is a uh, an email that we received. We enter that into the system. Um, and then as you scroll down, uh, they sent us great photos. I, I don't know how fast these will upload. Let's see. Pretty good. 
but a, a bunch of photos. They even sent videos. Um, and so we kind of just capture those here. Also, if there's a, a complaint later, it'll also be captured here and it'll kind of log those so you can see where there's multiple complaints. Um, yeah, videos here as well. So that was the 219. It is. Flood. It is. It yeah. is. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, you can see it in their house. Yeah. Um, and then this one has an assessment as well. So you can click on the assessment here and this is where um, you know, our, our inspector wrote up his information here. Um, he also has <clears throat> tons of photos. What's, what's kind of unique with what we can do here, because when the staff looks at this, or when we look at this, when you look at that photo, you don't really know where that is, but you can click on this button and it'll show you where that is. I'm sorry, I can zoom out a little bit. So it shows you where that's taken. So when staff is evaluating it in the office, um, they can kind of you know, understand where they are, you know, if, if you want to know where that is and, and what direction that was doing. It's just kind of a tool for internal. Um, let's see, we've got uh, the documents, this, and then this is where we generate the report. So all this information is entered in here, and if you click on here, it uh, pulls the report down for you. If, see how long it takes, but I think it did it. Here it goes. So staff doesn't populate that. The consultant does, Marshall. We so far now we when you see of next steps, yeah. um, we want okay. we want to yeah. have Hand that to on. where yeah to where staff does this, and that the only reason they reach out to consultants is for a major flood event where they just don't have the staff to get it all in a in a reasonable amount of time. Sure. Um, but this it develops this report. So this is kind of a little, a little easier to digest if you're not, you know, in the system and, and that kind of thing. Um, so that's, that's the main pieces of this. You can also um, come back over here. If, if you just wanted to come in and click on one, it'll take you to it. Oops, I missed it. And it'll take you to that service request. Uh, and all a citizen needs to do is go to our stormwater utility. Uh, right now, this is this is internal. This is another next step that we think we do. We we believe that the one of the next steps is to have a public portal to be able to go in and, and understand where your complaint is, what projects are coming up, um, mm -hmm. and also a place for them to enter in their complaints. Yeah. Uh, that's where we think we're. And I'm going to talk about this in a minute. But that's where we think we can make sure that we have mandatory fields to have enough information to to be able to uh, assess their, their the issue. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and then we also, uh, just to kind of show you one other tool, um, if you go in this, we have everything clicked except the assessments because it's on top of the, there it goes. But it gets crowded, so we turn it off. But um, you can come in here now and see which ones service requests have been assessed. Um, and you know, so there's there's actually some red dots in here that have been close that weren't assessed because they didn't need to be. It was pretty straightforward, and and Trace is able to just go address those. So in the future, when we get complaints from constituents, you can print us off all of that information, and we'll have it to share with you. That's that's that's, cor that's correct. That's right. That's and good. and yeah. And so I'll go I'll go back in the presentation and, and kind of go to the next areas um, because I think that's. Y'all are asking good good questions on, I think we're, we might be on the same page on where we need to go next. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we, we talked about service requests. I've said already that service requests aren't necessarily projects. Um, so when, when we look, when we evaluate the service request, we have to look at other service requests in the area and which ones are related. We have to look at the topography and see, you know, if, if we fix this, where would it go and are there problems downstream? And then maybe there's not service requests downstream, uh, but we know there's problems downstream. So that has to be evaluated to be able to put a project together. Um, and then from there, you, when we start putting projects together, we've, we have three classes of product projects um, because not all projects are created equal. As we start looking at them, class A is your big, your big projects. Um, they're the ones that are going to need a study or, or you know, major design calculations. It's, it's, a, it's not something that the inspector out in the field is going to be able to look at and go, well, I, I know what this is. Yeah. Um, class B is where 
you can kind of look out in the field and say, I know what this is, but I'm going to need some calculations and maybe some plans, but not major plans, and, and I'm going to need to work with the contractor to do this. And then the Class C projects are ones that you, you can kind of just tell what's happening. It needs some maintenance. You've got some clogged uh, culverts, things like that. Is there a dollar amount uh, assigned to each of the, cl uh, the class projects? For example, Class A, over 500000 Class B, over a hundred. I mean, is there any kind of monetary? No, it's, it's more of the, the Class A, B, and C is really just scope-wise, like what it'll take to do it. Um, the way we've estimated in our project list right now, a Class A, we're saying, well, we don't know yet. Um, we're going to need to do a study or something to understand that. So the cost estimate you'll see in the prioritized list that I'm going to show you in a minute okay. is actually what we think it might take to evaluate and design it. But it's a guess, you know, until you start looking at it. Class C, though, since that'd be uh, clean out a, a culvert or something along those lines, that's almost something that I think we ought to just have a dedicated crew and that's all they do is they go around taking care of Class C all year long. That's well, I, I believe you do. Yeah. I know we're getting there, but I'm just saying yeah. I want to make sure we do have this crew that's organized. Here they are. They've got what they need. Go to work. We, we've seen their work, and, and we've actually, as we've gone through and evaluated some of this, um, Trace and his crews uh, have already kind of known some of these already mm -hmm. just from being around a while. Um, and then when we found some of these, we'll, we'll send the Class C ones to Trace, and, and, and sometimes we go to uh, – to look at some of them and Trace has already been out there to do it and his their work isn't is really great yeah they, they do really good work um, so so we've we've found we've we've developed what projects are we've kind of got class a b and c so now what how do we prioritize them mm -hmm. um, and, and I will say here like both the class a b and c and what what I'm talking about here we're not reinventing a wheel here that we've looked at what other other people are doing the city of Nashville's is very similar to this we've tweaked it uh, with with Marshall and his staff to kind of fit uh, what what we think are, are best practices uh, also for the city of Hendersonville, but it's very similar. Um, but they do an empirical stormwater assessment score. Uh, just you know, out of the gate, if you just um, looked at what's going on on these, they have five categories: flooding, uh, erosion, maintenance, structural damage, and health and safety. And then there's different things in there that score differently. Like flooding, is it flooding um, a, a house, or is it flooding a road, or is it flooding a yard? Those are all different scores. Sure. Um, and they all, they, they all just add up. So you may have one that's flooding a road, a house, uh, you know, it, it's going to be pretty high, mm -hmm. you know, on that. So um, I'll show you kind of how those, those play out a little bit. Um, but, but we did this empirical score, and we ran a prioritization based off those, and, and it, we, we liked how it, how it turned out, and I'll, I'll show you that too. Um, but we don't think you just use an empirical score and go down a list uh, because you can't. You don't have enough money to do that. And, you're, you know, you may have these ones that are flooding probably need studies. And if you just went down the list, you, you might get two, two projects done in a year. So we don't think that's a, a good way to go. So additional consideration to, to prioritize projects, we think the scope category is one, the scope A, Bs, and Cs. Um, we don't think you do all As. Uh, we think you kind of mix those in. Um, Budget availability, of course, matters. You can't do what you can't, what you don't have money for. Um, we, we think a criteria you should consider when, when things are tied is number of residents served. Um, and then uh, geographic equity. You, we talked earlier about there being concentrations of areas, but we don't want to do all our work in one area. Everybody's, you know, spending their tax dollars on it. We want to make sure we hit um, several, several areas. And then I, I have up here other... Uh, criteria based on stakeholder feedback. Um, we figure as we go through this that that can be tweaked, you know, as we work through uh, concerns from constituents. One that hits my mind right now that we didn't list up here is, uh, and, and you guys were talking about paving projects, is coordination with other projects. It would make a lot of sense to get the biggest bang for your buck yeah. um, when you're looking at other projects and you know you have a, a ranked project over here. Maybe you go ahead and just do those Pave together. Road and get the right pitch. Yeah. So yeah. I, I concur with your analysis that the empirical assessment scores is not sufficient alone to determine need. Right. I, I agree. think there are other factors that are needed, and that's true in stormwater, and that's also paving. true in paving. That's yes, right. Sir. So. That's right. Yeah, we, we think it, it's, a, it's an indicator, but not the be-all. I remind myself of that concept. <laughs> <laughs> 
And I spoke earlier about this, you know, and I, I, I like to just keep reiterating this. I think the public, when we speak with them, we've been educating them, but just I, I know your driveway's flooding, but that is not a project because we've got to evaluate everything around that. And it's hard to hear because it, it you know, it, it'll seem like, well, all you need to do is make this pipe bigger, but it's, we've got to look at it from a holistic standpoint. So. Um, kind of going back to, this is the Cherokee uh, service request. I, I, I put East Drive up here because I think everybody in this room is familiar with it. You guys voted to let's, let's move on this one, um, and, and we are. Uh, but when we, when we got that cert, we looked at that location, and it is bad. It's, it, we saw what you all saw. And, um, but, but when we started looking at it holistically, all of those service requests in that area are related. Yeah, how um, it affects all tied one together. affects the other. Yeah, so we couldn't, we can't fix that intersection without going all the way downstream to the lake and, and starting at the lake, right, mm -hmm. and coming back. So we've we've got that kind of phased out uh, right now, and and also it's it's a big enough project we can't do it all in one year. Or that's that's all we do, you know. So we've got to look at that too. And and I, I did want to mention that too. Just because a project has multiple service requests doesn't mean you have to do the whole project at one time. There's, there's ways you can phase those out when you evaluate them. Um, so this is the project list, uh, prioritize where we are now. It's going to change regularly. We just got a bunch of new flood data in, um, so we're working through that. I'm going to bring that up, and I, it's, you still can't read it from here. Uh, number one on there is the South Burn area, um, and it, it makes sense why it would score number one. Houses are flooding, uh, roads are flooding, just all of that. Now when we, st I've got an asterisk. It's hard to read from here, but I have an asterisk by the ones that we have them up there, but it's saying you need a study to understand what's going on here. Um, if, you, if you go on down the list, number four is the Cherokee area, mm -hmm. which, which made sense to us. So we liked kind of, and there were others that kind of fell in, in that way too. We liked kind of how the prioritization was pointing us in the right direction, not necessarily how we would make a project list exactly, um, but, but, but we have, that's where we've started here. So. Uh, so um, from from all that information, from that prioritized list, the next step would be to do to develop a, a project list. We have this many dollars. Um, I think this month we started collecting dollars for next year. Um, so we we want to take that, take those criteria, and develop some project list alternatives uh, with with Marshall and the city, and and then we want to come back to you guys and and. Uh, and, and present that. Um, we believe that we that the best way to do this is just to be extremely transparent. Here's the here's the priority list, and here's why we you know here's the other criteria we were evaluating, and here's why we did it that way, and here's others. You know, here's two, here's two million dollars worth of work, and we'll have eight hundred thousand left over when we're done, and we'll move on to something. That, else. That's right. That's yes. right. So, um, so next steps. Uh, we we. We've kind of presented this to you. We'll get you the, the uh, presentation as well to you guys so you can kind of look at it yourself uh, after this. But we, we would love comments back, uh, buy-in from this group, and then if we need to take it to BOMA as well, um, we're happy to do that. Question. Sure. On your system, well, first of all, Marshall, once we get this analysis, do we communicate with the, con with the, the, the resident or with the citizen? We, right. To get the, give them uh, give, give them an expectation of when we think we can get to it. You know. So does the system have the ability, because you've got the, the customer name, you've got the address, mm -hmm. to generate a letter so that it's done automatically and then, you know, it's got the assessment, it's got the complaint, you know, all in one, and then all staff will have to do is sign it and mail it. Well, right now... Um, there are things the system will be able to do. Right now, the system doesn't group it as projects um, automatically. That's that's uh, pretty manual, just having to understand the topography and look at it from that standpoint. So we're developing projects. Um, we, we've got the information from the system, but we're developing it outside the system right now, the, the project list. No, I guess I'm just wondering, once you have the complaint, you do the assessment, it's all up there, you showed it to us. Mm -hmm. That is the system. Can the system generate a letter to that customer, and boom, that 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 saves staff having to generate that, and the system just generates it. 
Abs decided, absolutely. Y'all are really good. You keep getting ahead of me on my presentation. <laughs> <laughs> this is, that's, a, that's a great question, and it is that's something. A great committee. Well, I'm not finished. <laughs> I would also wonder, are, are, are those complaints grouped by ward? They, we know what wards they're in. So could, could when the consumer sends, gets a letter, the resident, could the alderman in that, the two aldermen also get the letter? So we're aware. Okay. So we are aware of the, the, the communication that you've had with one of our constituents? Yes. Hmm. The email would be fine, too, you know. Yeah, that'd be well, I think that's what we were thinking, yeah, as an email. But it would be a form, a form email that would plug in their information okay. and, you know, whatever attachments we need to attach. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. It just keeps us in the loop. You know? Yeah, right, right. And, Marshall. That's a, good, that's a good question. Marshall, is this helpful? Yes. This is helping Yes. And tell me, who is, who's in charge of stormwater in your department? We have uh, Dwayne, Dwayne Allen, Helen Morrison, and also um, Chris Rapp inspection staff. But right now, D Dwayne and Helen are, are the ones running the stormwater staff with assistance from, from me. But, yeah. but yeah. So is Dwayne the he, boss? I mean, is he, is, yes. is he right under you y over yes. stormwater? Yes, he is. Because I've yeah. never seen him in any of the meetings talking about stormwater issues. He's He's been out, well, more, more recently he's been out, he's on sick leave right now. But, um, is everything but, okay? He's a good guy. I don't it, know if you've it, ever met I've him. I've never yeah. met him. He's a I've really met super really. Or if I have, I, I forgot. Okay. Yeah, I've been out on well, in ditches with him yeah, looking at him before. He, so he, but he does go he's, he's, he's real quiet, you know. Um, I mean, he doesn't. He's not just like real quiet. No, no, he's nothing like us. <laughs> no, he'll. But he's an engineer. He, 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 he has a PE. He, he is. Yes. Yeah. And uh, do you have yeah, enough staff in stormwater? I, I believe. I believe we do. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, that's why I was asking about crews because I want to make sure we have the on the ground working crews that can, you know, if it's less keen, they not. Uh, Head wall, storm, you know, ditches, pipes in the streets. Oh, that one's yeah. corroded. We need to replace it. They can get out there and look at it. I understand we have an employee who goes out and does those inspections once a year, but I'm like, uh, need more than just inspecting it. We need to actually get hands on and digging it out or whatever may be the case. I, it, I just want to make sure it's in there because so, that's, that's a so several bang years for your ago, buck. Uh, Pat, didn't we talk about, uh, Mark, about the possibility of purchasing? A yep. truck that cleans out jets. Uh, jet sure that cleans did. out the. the is we, that yeah, that, that's that's something Trace has. We, we've we've discussed that. Yes. Um, on, so it was maybe maybe a, maybe a year maybe a year ago. Hendersonville Utility District. We use their jet right uh, right truck. Yeah, Trace. Uh, we discussed that internally, and um, you know we, we have a re relationship with the utility district to, mm -hmm. to borrow theirs when we need it, and so it, it wasn't. We didn't use it enough. We felt like to warrant, okay. but buying one. So mowed it. Um, so about we six hundred thousand dollars. I understood. That's all yeah. I need to know. Yeah. That's, but that's but, but we did we did okay. talk about that. So. Yeah. And we also talked about a track hoe, wasn't it? Yeah, well, we bought. Well, we yeah, we we, we, we purchased. We we have purchased a couple pieces of equipment yeah, in this past year. Yeah. yeah. Bigger piece of equipment mm -hmm. too. Well, let me say, Trace is an angel. He, he, he is. gets Anytime on it. Anytime I have a problem. Yep. He is Johnny on the spot. Yes, and I, sir. Please take back to him our commendations. I thought he, we he does an excellent job. He's very customer oriented. He is. Uh, very yeah. customer oriented. How much money do we have in, in stormwater? Uh, like, how much do we balance? Have? Oh, um, like, 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 as of the, uh, right now? Just, yeah. I, I'm, I'm gonna last get, time you looked at it. I thought I'm going to guess it's between five and six hundred thousand dollars, and it, it ranges. I mean, we've obviously, as we do projects, it's you know, we but we're it fluctuates, but we're getting money as, as you know, Philip pointed point, out. We're four cost. million to two point eight a yeah, year, right? Yeah, I and think when the taxes roll in, I think that's about what it is. How actually. much? About two four, two point four, two point six, somewhere in there. But yeah. it's, okay. as houses come online, additional houses, we get we get $2, more dollars. Yeah. Right, because, it, it continues. Mary's magical place is, is five hundred mm -hmm. to fix it. That's an insurance claim, I think, isn't it? No. If, for as far as the, the, the damage at Veterans, or the, 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 for the flood, the yeah. berm at flood Veterans berm. Park. It, I, don't I, I don't remember it being that much, but it, it, may, it may be. I haven't seen, I can't remember the estimate, but it may be. It may be I don't know. It, yeah. I don't, I, I don't but, know. I know yeah. it wasn't well, that much. Yeah. I, I thought it was 300 and something thousand, and we had to move yeah. uh, inline right. hockey so we can do the yeah. 
That's what I. Yeah. And I thought that Mary Marriage and Place was going to be an insurance claim that uh, the insurance said, "Hey, you got to move this to some last time. We're well, going to pay for this." That, yeah. Right. So here and, we are. And I think Andy Gilly knows a lot about that. He does. I know yeah. he talked to me about it. Because I think we discussed doing that in in, in house yeah. with, with our own crews. Yeah. Um, really. Yeah, which it, mm -hmm. Did you do the engineering for that? No. no, we had we had another another company do that, but I think as far as the work though, it's fairly straightforward. I think it's something we could you know we could handle. Wow, so. it's a bunch of berms and things. Uh, wow, like whoop de doos or something. <laughs> Somebody better turn on a motorcycle riding around out there. So I, I can wrap this up real quick. We're we're almost yes, there. Uh, you know, we don't we weren't sure if if we wanted to bring this before this body and then didn't know if we also needed to bring it before BOMA um, just on, on direction and get to get comments. Um, but the next step would be to address any concerns or comments that we get and, and start implementing that plan. Um, we talked about uh, in the spring before COVID uh, even taking it to the public to have um, uh, to break out into listening sessions about stormwater issues in their area and get them in the system just to kind of get as, as much as we can in. Um, the, the, the June events really helped with evaluating this stuff. So the more data that we can get, the better, uh, the better this process is going to be and the more we're going to hone in on it. Um, but we do think, you know, as you move to planned projects and you have your project lists and you, you, maybe you have some basin studies in that, that we would like to hold public meetings for those um, to get feedback from those people in those areas. Um, you, you learn a bunch from people that live there. You can model things all day, but you know when you talk to the folks that live there, they they witness it. They tell you the reality. When they have right. a foot of water in the garage. Right, right, and how often it does, and you know that kind of thing. It's just very helpful. Um, and then we'd like to, and, and you guys had already talked about um, what does this system do this, and we'd like to enhance the system uh, to to for reporting and transparency. Uh, one of the first things is to provide a public viewer so that they can enter their own service requests in. When, when a constituent calls you guys, you can point them to the website and they can you know, enter all that in. Um, we can then send, once they enter it in, an automatic email that says, hey, we've received this, so they know they got it, it didn't go into a black hole. Uh, and then once it's been evaluated, we can send emails saying, you know, we, we've evaluated this, it's in line, we'll let you know, you know or, or the next prioritized project list will come out you know, in October of next year. However, we work this out um, to do that. You know, we, we can't just plug it in and know exactly where it falls, but but we'll be evaluating things uh, at least on an annual basis. And then um, we want to allow for city staff to document stormwater service requests in the field in real time, uh, so they can do it on their own as as service requests come in um, and be autonomous uh, with that. The, neither one of those are are very hard to get up and running but we think those would be you know next steps on that I would agree with taking it to uh, BOMA because BOMA we get issues from everyone on this board and um, if everybody's on the same page it'd be a lot easier to deal with I think I think so too if we're all like using the same plan and, and you know all agree on the same plan and, and path forward and that's that's all I had so if there's any other questions or if I can Y'all have had great questions throughout, so. Does anybody have any questions at this point? <clears throat> All right, my only comment is thank you for coming and showing us this. Um, it's very good so far. I, I really enjoy what you've done. I think that the, the Board of Aldermen would know, should know about it. Um, we'll need to schedule a time. Sure. When that would be. Um, I don't even know if I'll be here next time you see me. So. <laughs> I would encourage it to be after the election uh, because then you've got a four years worth of people that you're going to have to deal with. So, you know, they'll be on the ground floor with it. Mm -hmm. And I do think, and maybe you could ask the alderman, if, you know, whoever's there. Hopefully I'll be here serving with my colleagues. Um, I feel like I will, but I don't know. Everybody's, everybody says I would, but I don't, you never know. I mean, I. I've been there before, so I, I, you know, I lost one one time, and so I know, you know, it didn't, it became, it didn't happen. So, but what I would do um, is I would ask that the alderman at that time what you want, what you want, what I guess Public Works mm -hmm. and and you guys want to do about talking to like having an open meeting 
or maybe have it wh what you said just breaking down um, the sections of Hendersonville that are that you know need to be because I'll tell you when it comes to paving and water and you all know this they'll by God they'll come those people will come I, that's, and we've we've had remember the meeting, meeting we were here yeah, for five hours yeah. <laughs> with Southburn. we had an open meeting here on for Southburn and we were here for five hours and we just we you know was like, oh my lord it just kept on and on and on thought we so, had to call the police yeah I mean it, you know people are really and I understand that um, so that's just my you know I would talk to the alderman to see you know sure. what they want um, and I can guarantee you right now they're going to probably say yeah you know let me know when you know they'll be there because we're all interested in it you know especially you know how hendersonville you know we're different the, this committee's different because we understand about the water because we understand where hendersonville lies within the topographical map of middle tennessee mm -hmm. and so and then we've got the lake and so mm -hmm. you know some people don't realize that the water actually starts in white house and ends in in the old hickory lake you know so before old hickory cotton town yeah uh, yeah <laughs> cotton town yeah and so you know a lot of people don't realize a long time ago that you know the indians used to use the creek in their canoes and go all the way down here and there was no you know the it, the lake it was the creek that actually ended there mm -hmm. so and you know, so they don't, they just don't know where the water comes from. They just think it comes from overdevelopment, which sometimes I think that that's an issue, but it's not always overdevelopment or screwed up development. Um, that's my opinion. Uh, you know, you ask somebody else and they'll say, oh, no, it's getting more. It is because we had some yews come in here and build 283 houses and now they've, you know, flooded. And, but I, I'm not sure that's the case. I think it's just the way the lay of the land here in town is. But, but I, don't know. I would, on that right there, I would say you're probably correct because I've always used this analogy. Take Hendersonville when it started. Yeah. And you talk about the, the Southburn neighborhood or maybe over here off of Walton Ferry at Imperial, the uh, the original Cages area, right. the Cages Bend area, that area. That would be areas A. And then right. you go just outside of that, that would be B, C, D, e, and E. Well, a was designed for B. It wasn't, really wasn't thinking 40 right. years down the road of what's going to be just a mile over there. Right. Now you've got from 12,000 people to 60,000 people. And that's what you got. <laughs> and if you look at numbers, they're going to talk on 120,000 within another 10 or 15 years in the regional planning area for Hendersonville. So therefore, when you start adding up all those numbers, you say, wait a minute, we need to go back to A and correct A because A right. can't handle what E is send it send out, send them out. It's not E, it's A, because A was designed for A. Right. And we, you know, we had to go in there and look at the, the like we did at Western Place, all the pipes and all the drains and reevaluated everything through there. Yeah. Yeah. So, Marshall, just make sure that the final recommendations on projects is data driven. Yeah, yes, sir. Data, yeah, that's the main data, 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 yeah. data. And I'd like to see us increase our. Uh, 25 year storm standard i know we were play with 50 year storm standards yeah. but we need to start really looking at that because we've had that's so probably, many events here lately yeah. that have said wait a minute we had yeah. back to back storms in june which were over 100 year or at least 100 year 100 yes. year storms exactly. two of them back yeah. to back yeah. and we weren't ready for it yeah. our systems for 25 right. to 50 and here we are at 100 and did it twice and people want to know what's happening we have, we're not prepared so we've got to update our rating to the uh -huh. 50 and 100 year standard to help accommodate for that. So on new subdivisions, take off on yes, what Pat was exactly saying. Right. What are we using? 25 or 50 years? 25 currently, but um, the caveat to that is if, if we know there are problems downstream, like a good example is, is Norman Creek. Uh, you know, obviously it's upstream of Autumn Creek, and we held them to a higher standard because we knew there were issues right. you know, downstream. So we, we held them to the 100-year storm event okay, instead good. of the 25-year. Very good. But so in the, doing they, that, what about the other one, the one that we're talking about, the adjoining property? Have we went back and updated theirs from 25 and said, hey, let's see if we can talk right. about going to 50 to accommodate the 100? Right. Because yeah. it's a domino effect going all the way down yeah. to the, the lake. And all that all that water. The water's headed toward you. Creek. Here it, it comes. Comes in, my, comes in all the creek. It's yeah. coming right at you. Yeah. 
Good. Thank you. That's just thoughts I have too, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Most Same important number. committee in Hendersonville right here, bro. That's right. I realize what we're talking about costs money, but it's money but it, we're going to well spend hey, in the long you. run. That's the truth. All right. Is there anything else at this point? Uh, what do you need? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. There was some discussion on some uh, exemptions on paying stormwater fees. Schools were one. Churches. That they have to pay. That's correct. That yep. They haven't been paying, correct? That's correct. Have and we corrected that? Yes. So the Department yep. of Education knows that they're going to have to start paying stormwater fees. That's, that's correct. Okay. Because yep. it is a utility. It is not a, yep. right. just some tax. Right. It is yep. a utility like your gas bill or your electric bill. You still have to pay for utilities. Yep. Thank you. That is the caveat to that. All right. All right. So what what is the next step for you? And then we'll be through with you this evening. <laughs> You're good. I, I'm. Uh, I'm just going to work with Marshall. Okay. I'm. I'm just. We're ready to move okay. on next Probably steps. Probably within the next month, wouldn't you all say that goes to the board the next next month? Probably. Yes, sir. Sure. I mean, I I just soon get it that way. I mean, let the dust settle and the, the let's move forward. Yeah. The, the pro priorities. Yeah. To let him. Yeah. To show his presentation within yeah. within a month yeah uh, November meeting at, at that point the committee yeah, the end of November I guess at that point the com everything will be settled I mean the, as okay. far as is that, is that, yeah, so that? November 3rd you'll find out who's going to be here yeah you but you'll at, at the end at the end of the month of November everything will be all the yeah, committees will be set yeah because okay. you'll have the committee committee set probably the, the following week and no, no Mark, I'm it's you in have to. January. Well, here's the thing. I, I, they may, because of the COVID, they may want to bump that up because here's what will happen. You can't set a committee until the election commission approves Certified. the elections. Then once that is the way we've always done it, and that's what's so strange. You got to seat the alderman, the new alderman. Yeah, but before then, you always send out those packets of mm -hmm. where you want to sit. And then w the night of the swearing in, the com uh, the committee on committees meet in the mayor's office, and and then they dispel everyone. Say, okay, you go here, you go here, and then, and then we get in a fight up here. Hopefully, yeah, I'm gonna jump ship and move over there. <laughs> yeah, you know. So when will the new board be seated? Um, so when they have the third. Seat. Take the oath. It'd be in January, won't it? Well. No. Well, maybe not. It may be in December. December. Yeah. So, I would say yeah, up to third. It would. It is December. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'd have to look. It's uh, part of the last meeting calendar. in December because uh, we had presentations. Of right. This. It's around the. Yeah. I think it's for like around the fifteenth or something like that. Yeah. Really, it's that close. I mean, it's they get you set in. I mean, they. I mean, I was thinking of all the years we've done it. The only time we ever uh, were sat in January was Erskine Osbrooks, our first mayor. Mm. Um, he he sat us, I think, in January. We were trying to push him, and he wouldn't. You know, he wouldn't. Back, he would not but back down from mm -hmm. it. And, and that board was crazy. I remember that. Well, let me ask Marshall, how time sensitive is this? Well, I process? think we I think we have the ability to move forward uh, with. Obviously, fill up and, and still make progress, um, and then we can come. Whatever's convenient for Boma, we can, you know, come and present. Whenever, okay. whatever, whatever. I mean, because it sounds like you know, Zoom meetings will be what's going to happen until at least the end of the year. Um, yeah. I, listen, I'm so going to tell you about this this COVID man. We're already what there was one COVID that said there were over like 44 people. And then, like, the next day, it was 400 and something. Well, they've got we, the mask mandate coming back on the 24th of this month for Williamson and Sumner counties. I'm yeah. telling so, you, we, we would, obviously, we would prefer it to be in person if yeah. if possible. Um, but if if there's certainly a need for us to present, for it to present before um, before we can, you know, be in person, we can certainly do it by Zoom. Yeah. Um, and so okay. we, we can just, we, I can get with Dave. and We're not exactly right. spread apart up here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I appreciate yeah. that, but that <clears throat> still bothers me right there. I mean, this COVID thing, I, you know, I've had a lot, you know, I know this sounds, and we're getting way off subject and we'll get back on subject, but I've had several people that have passed 
from that. Yes. And um, it scares the hell out of me. I have a friend I, that is I don't know it. Went yeah. to high school with no underlying conditions. He went, they tested him for flu A and B, and the doctor said, "Oh yeah, let's test you for COVID too." Three days later, calls him up and said, "You got COVID." Three yeah. days later, wound up at Centennial, drug induced coma for 16 days on an ITMO machine. And they said, "You stayed on an ITMO machine longer than anybody we've ever seen." You're like a science scientific experiment himself. Mm -hmm. It affected his taste, his smell, and his vision. Not just those, but he, he's lost. He can't even see the screen on his phone to make a phone call. He, he's, he's, uh, he spent over a month at Centennial and uh, another month in rehab, and the doctor said, we hope we can get your vision back. Tell him, man. And, it, uh, and they had to revive him four times while he was there at Centennial. And he's 56 years old, no underlying conditions. And, um, and um, just I, I talked to him, and he, I said, well, Tracy, don't mind me asking, how's your EOBs on that dude? He said, Pat, I quit counting at $900,000. I don't know. Well, I hope something, you know, happens. You know, you keep hearing the stuff that they're going to do, but, I, you know, I don't know what's going to happen about it. It's crazy. Yep. So, anyway, uh, let's get back to something that we can do something about. All right. So, do we have any other questions? We're gonna, probably going to try to get this on as soon as we can in, in November, maybe even – so we'll just see. We'll plan on getting in touch with uh, Marshall about that in the end of November. Okay. So We're ready. Yeah, so. right. And we'll get her on the agenda for you. All right. Well, thank you for doing that. That's the excellent news you've brought us. And uh, thank you, Marshall, for doing that, uh, getting them here. Um, let's go with, uh, if there's no other discussion, I think we have uh, the traffic issues uh, with Stop 30, New Shackle Island Road, and Drake's Creek Road, and others. Do we? Think, Eddie, did you add that? Was that something you added to? Yeah, do you remember? I, I continue to get complaints about the danger of yeah. coming out old Drake's Creek on, on the, the new on the New Shackle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Drake's Point uh, residents We've, have complained that sev several of them have almost been hit broadsided. Yes. And so we, I know that you, you had told me, and I thought the committee needed to know your plan yes. for addressing that uh, briefly. The, the, we have identified that as a project. Okay. Um, and I say that it, it would be a capital project. Um, we had originally planned to put that in the bond, um, but I think after looking at it and evaluating it a little bit closely, I think we're going to include right that. Well, well that, that's, a, that's a separate that, – that, that we're doing that now. Okay. Um, there's the intersection of New Tackle and, and Old Drake's Creek. We are going to put that as a uh, project in, in next year's fiscal, well, next year's budget. And so we're going to put money in there for that. And we'll be able to use, hopefully, by the time we get ready to do it, we'll also have some more money from the development in that area that we can put alongside our own money and be able to, be able to fund it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we're, we're looking forward to, we, we realize that's a need. And um, you know, look forward to. We're talking to about it. a traffic light, correct? Yeah, uh, turn turn lanes in a traffic light. Yeah. yeah so there'd be uh, a left turn lane uh, going southbound, and also a, a right turn lane uh, going northbound, yeah. and then a, obviously a, a traffic signal. But um, but yeah, I mean, we we, look, we realize there's a need there's a need for that. And we'll make it a project. Another thing, um, just since we're talking about the traffic lights and things of this nature, I was over there at the early voting at Rockland Road and Imperial. Yeah. And some of the ladies that were talking about, oh, my God, we need to have a traffic light right here. I said, ma'am, you just don't put a traffic light out there. you got to have what they call a warrant study. Yeah. She said, well, why don't – and the reason why I'm bringing this up is I'm trying yeah. to put it on record so people understand. Warrant studies, we have to have warrant studies for stop signs, for roundabouts, right. for yeah. stop lights. Yeah, I've nothing got a we can just throw that, up there yeah. because we want to. We have to make sure it's uh, feasible. And the state of Tennessee wants to make sure we checked off some boxes to make sure it fits the protocol to do it. Well, what I did, and this was back before, um, this was when, um, <clears throat> Marshall, you were not, you were just, uh, you were just our engineer. That's all you were. <coughs> but who was the, what was that guy's name I, that was the engineer, I mean, the public works? I just can't Mr. Think. Moore or Mr. Yeah. Uh, uh, not, no, no, the other guy, um, what is his name? The guy, Horton. And then there Horton, was another yes, guy uh, named uh, Chip Durham. Moore. That's it. Um, that's in my area, in my ward, so I wanted mm -hmm. to let everybody know about that because um, I've always – I have been contacted for ages right there, but we did a traffic count there so on several times. I don't know whether you all still have that report, mm -hmm. but Man. TDOT said it did not warrant a red light, and I've done it. I know, I know I've done it 
uh, two times. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe even three. Actually, I have to go back and look at my notes in the garage because it's so old. But they it did not. They said it didn't warrant it. It was it was really heavy at traffic out, uh, like coming home from work. But for the rest of the time, it was didn't you? it wasn't. It didn't set it. <clears throat> two hours in the morning, two hours in the evening, type right. thing. And so they yeah. didn't. So it didn't. Well, I've heard that T. Dot said the reason it doesn't warrant for the state to pay for a traffic light at that location is nobody's been killed yet. Right. Well, and we're that's trying ridiculous. To, we're trying yeah. to avoid that. That's yeah. Not, that's that's a ridiculous <laughs> that's, criteria. It sure is. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Avoid to. to Quit for to avoid spending money. Yeah, and, and we'll be able to move forward similar to the project we did at Bluegrass Top 30 Main yes. Street. Uh, it'd be a similar situation where, you know, as a city, we decide to move forward with it, and we let obviously let TDOT know, but uh, they would allow us to, you know, allow us to do that. So, I don't know, but I just to, to respond to you, I've you know I've <clears> heard <throat> that, and I've I've just I've answered that a billion times. Yeah, I was out there this past week, like I said, holding a sign, and yeah. Uh, Ladies were standing there. They actually screamed once or twice because they thought a car was coming across the uh, uh, listen, on the curb. Uh, but it's I said, dangerous. Yes, maybe you need to pay attention if you're going to be out here. It's a dangerous yeah. spot. You know, especially in the summertime or the, or the warmth. You know, you know, where you've got all those tractors and uh, mowers and these trailers and stuff. It gets sketchy out there, man. All right, let's go on. If there's no other um, discussion on we discussed on the stop thirty, we'll move on to the update on trash. Trash is going well. There was a, a chart provided in your in your packet from last last month that gave a, a breakdown of the number of misses uh, that we have every every day and right. uh, the numbers you know uh, numbers that we had a couple of days that they're a little higher than than they should have been but but uh, overall um, you know the, the the numbers are are good. We're getting you know anywhere from ten to fifteen you know misses misses a day. Which when you think about the you know the the three to four thousand service units they're going to that's a it's a very low low percentage um so yeah. i think the, obviously the goal is to have zero uh, but you know we're you know we're, we're getting you know, getting you know, closer to that every every week so well i will say my i've had maybe in the past three or four months probably maybe three or four calls is yeah. all I've got. Yeah, and, and also encourage people, I guess, for those out there listening and watching, uh, if, you, if your trash is missed, if you have a concern, you know, please, you know, please reach out to us, call us, and, and we'll uh, do, do everything we can to get that you get that addressed. I got to tell you a funny one, though, about trash. This is so hilarious. I was, and I usually don't talk about it. say there's nothing funny about trash, right? No, I was going to say usually <laughs> I don't do it, but. Uh, and I usually don't talk about campaigning either, but I was campaigning and where well, they were doing the trash and I was, was we were just right on the same thing. <laughs> and um, I was walking and I saw the, and they they threw the trash in there and, the, you know, like this and, the, and it's, the trash can went in, too. So he reached in and got it and they they but they the the top was still in there and they weren't they he just wasn't paying attention you know and he said and he did i figured he'd throw it out but he just he sat it down like this so while he was down there doing that they started the machine and it, it just took that that top you know oh yeah and just smashed it in but they i know this is awful they didn't do a thing they just kept moving on and so i called it mm -hmm. in and i just told them you know probably somebody needs to go out there and either tell them and so mm -hmm. I knew the I knew the people on it was on Roberta and I knew them. In fact, I, they've got a sign of mine in their yard, or they used to. Have somebody stole a bunch of my signs over the period of campaigning, but they all do. It. That's no big deal. So, uh, but they went over there and they said it was okay. Don't worry about it. They were going to do something. To, I don't they, know, they had to replace, replace it. Yeah. Yeah. Buy them a new. But yeah. they said, no, nah, don't worry day. about it. You know, no. just. We'll get it. Lady had two cans out there. One went away, and one's in the ditch. And she was wanting to know where her cans. At. I said, oh, "I probably went in the garbage can, man." <laughs> yeah, the man. Truck. I had to call him, <laughs> call it in. I did. So uh, it was it was crazy though. I started laughing because I saw something, you know, like that, you know, in public works. But anyway, that's enough on. I'm glad. Any any discussion about trash? Because we're just about through. We've got a uh, on other business, and then I got the one that's real <laughs> freaky that we got to talk about. Uh, other uh, go ahead streaks. Yeah, yeah, yes, I was going to mention there is a, a section of Meadows of Indian Lake uh, that we are. Uh, it's at, at the end of its uh, time for completion, and we have evaluated it and looked at it, and we're taking it before this body for uh, for approval. If you need a month to 
go out and look at it. That, that's perfectly fine. I just wanted to make I you, have make not you aware, seen it, aware so of it. I need, I need that. And, I'll, and I failed I to bring copies, but I'll send you everyone an email of the map that we did okay. showing the location of that. But um, it's kind of in the, in the back uh, of, of, of Meadows. But we'll, I'll send you is that, that map. Is that okay and, with you guys? Yeah, is I mean, this accepting roads? Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. That they, they, if, but what we can yeah, do is. the Meadows of Indian Lake. If we're not, and I'm not expecting you to vote on it today, but if okay. you want to, if I can, I can send you the map, and then when we meet next week. Okay. Next we Tuesday. Can, yeah, we put can, it on there. Yeah, yeah put, put it on, on the agenda because that will give me enough yep. time. Um, I'll run out there and look at it during yep. the, this week. Uh, well, tomorrow's Friday. Yeah, I can do it Friday. I can do it tomorrow. I'll go out there and look at it. Um, Speaking of next agenda, uh, Sarah was doing a traffic study for Stop 30. Will that be ready Tuesday? She was going to do a traffic study, a crash study. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll ask okay. if I find out. Okay. Thank you. And I'd also like to find out about Saunders Ferry being added to the MPO. Okay. We've talked about that. I, I think, I think they've done their evaluation. I know. I was just that, curious yeah. where we're at on that. If it should that to be. It. Yeah. I'm going to tell you. Oh, I know. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, how are projects like that added? The, the MPO is for, for funding, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. But most how, of how, what, what's the BOMA procedure? Did just, did just Alderman go up to Marshall and you, ask, or do they come through this committee? Or well, they. Um, you can do either way. The bottom, I mean, if you want to get it done, you have to. Well, I was trying to think of uh, you have to really approach and, and if correct me if I'm wrong, but you have to go through the planning commission mm -hmm. and then it goes through that process. And then you just kind of alert your colleagues what you've done, you know, because you don't want 15 million projects going to going to Nashville. Right. Because, right. you know, right. it's just not going to take care of us. Yeah. Right. They'll go, you want it when? <laughs> You know, well, 20 years well, from now, you'll get to it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wasn't, I wasn't mentioning Keith and you I. You go through the planning commission. Keith and I got together last last year, and, and we sent a, a pretty exhaustive list of all the, essentially, all the major roads in town. Right. Um, you know, we, we sent those to the MPO, GNRC, and we've, we've got, I think, have since gotten that, ev that evaluation back, mm -hmm. uh, but we haven't had time to really discuss it. Just, yeah. We just got it. But, um, but that is something that we've, we've sent over, I think, 22 or 23 projects. Um, and so we, we can we can certainly you know send that to. to I just want to make sure Saunders Ferry is one of the roads. That's, it, 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 it is. Because I mean, yeah. yeah one thing is the fox back all, there can tell you it's a dangerous road at yeah. nighttime, especially. Twenty four seven. I like to see it wide enough that we could actually add a bike lane to it, to you go all the way out that road. You're going to start riding bicycles? I used to when I was a kid. I used to ride my bike going to high school. Yeah. I used to keep my bike on my bike tire on the white stripe down Saunders Ferry. It's the only way you could do it through that part where the high rise is at. Yeah. You'd get killed riding down through there if you wasn't careful. So, yeah. Put your tire on the white stripe and leave it right there. There's no wiggle around. So, that's how it's done. And then it goes back to Public Works. Um, other than that, I, I just have a couple of things that I wanted to, that, um, to talk about. One, we have to find out about this because I'm not really sure. And I, uh, um, Marshall and I spoke about it just briefly on the phone. And, uh, and I'm not sure, but if you, uh, there, and remember it's called Roads Drive. That, that's, it's kind of, I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Rose I Hill. had not heard of it. It's over on um, Rice Road, 109 Rice Road. It's in the back, very, you know, the oldest section of Hendersonville. Just go on River Road and yep. go on there and go just go all the way to the back, and you'll see it. It's the, the road is probably <coughs> as short as from here to the door. It's really, it's real short. Are you talking about that gravel, it, that gravel driveway? Yeah, it's a dri about it looks like a driveway road, to me, like that. Yeah. sir. Hadn't we talked about abandoning that road, abandoning it? I'm not even sure it's a road. I, John, I, John, John Bradley was going to evaluate that. Okay, what, yeah. well, good. I'm glad y'all have looked at that because yeah. I went out there and looked at it, and I'm just not. I mean, it looks like a driveway to me. Yep. So I don't know if it. I, 
I've, it's as as long as I've been on this board, it's never come up to be accepted. I mean, it's a yeah. horrible. It's the worst road in Hendersonville. I'm going to tell you. Lauderdale Court beat it out until it was fixed, right? Well, <laughs> may, there. Well, between Lauderdale Court and this one, because they're both bad. I know it. Um, Lauderdale Court was bigger and longer than this one. Mm -hmm. um, but this thing looks to me like a driveway. I've seen a picture of it, and you're all right. It does look like that's a road. Yeah. I, Where does it go? To the lake. Between two I houses. Mean, I mean, it's just like. Yeah, exactly. It's right there. You're exactly right. It's two houses right there. So we need to look at it and see. Um, I'm just not sure what it is. Um, I, I remember when before they built the houses there that there was a mobile home down there. I knew the people real well. And I don't ever remember the road ever being there. I, d I don't. I don't. Um, I remember um, the mobile home being there, but I don't remember that that was an actual road. But it could have been. I don't know. You know, I just don't ever remember it coming through. I really, truly don't. Speaking of roads, another road I'd like to see us uh, improve would be Cage's Road. Yeah. That's that's a rough road too, boy. Especially with all yeah, the construction that has happened. In yeah, like there's been a lot of construction. Five years there. on that road. Yeah. So y'all might want to just look at that too, okay. Cage's Road. But yeah, if, if John can look at that and determine, determine, um, I know those people. I, well, I know the lady, um, the guy that's there. Um, can't remember his name now. He's about 81 years old. Um, they've got a nice, I mean, it's a nice little place, a nice house. It'll be good for his children, mm. you know, to go down there. But I just don't know anything about the road. I don't remember anything. But other than that, that's all I, that I have on the on my list. And if, Move to adjourn. If, I just want to thank okay. you before we adjourn. I want to thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Pat, for meeting in person. Oh, I think sure. we accomplished so much more. I agree. Yeah. And I know yeah. it's it's a little risky, but you know, no, I, we, I, we I, take precautions. But I thank thought you it was for necessary. We're distancing yes, sir. right now, and I, I have a mask with me. We stand necessary. up to get a little closer. We yeah. have our mask on. Thank you. Thank, thank y'all for meeting. Our yes, meeting sir. is adjourned. On but I agree with you on that. Five meeting. ten. Yeah. Oh, good. Thanks, Pat, for coming. A vote. Thanks for coming. Oh yeah. Thank you. All in favor, signify by saying. Aye. Uh, aye. When the roll's called, Mr. Campbell, <laughs> <Aye>. <laughs> Mr. Roberson, uh, myself, and the chair votes aye. Right. <laughs>